Welcome to MacBreak Studio. I'm here with Mark Spencer, and we're looking at doing something with shapes. Yeah, I want to give Final Cut Pro 10 users another reason to consider using motion for making something useful. Uh, <laughs> that sounds funny, as opposed to making something well, useless. I, I mean, <laughs> just some motivation. I, I make a lot of useless stuff. I just love motion. I make a lot of fun things, but um, I just want to show something that you can do that will help you in Final Cut immediately and it leverages motion to do so. All right, great. And, and here's the motivation for it is sometimes you need, when you're doing an edit, you need a shape. Yeah. It might be to have a, be a background for a photo. It might be a background for text, but you need some kind of shape on the screen. And Final Cut in the generator's browser in the elements category has a shapes generator. I sometimes forget that's even there. Yeah, a lot, some people don't even know it's there. So you press E and I'll add it to my timeline here. Shift Z to fit it to the window and Command 4 for the inspector. And let's just close the um, lab, library list in the file, the browser there, we don't need it. If we look in the inspector, this particular, this is a motion project. It has some different shapes you can use. Uh, and if I go to the square, you know, great, there's a shape there and I can increase the width to it and I can change the color of the outside and, you know, I can do a, a variety of things to it, but often you want to change the dimensions. Uh, maybe you want it to match 16.9. You wanted to put... It's, it's locked at that you know, essentially Well, it, it kind of is. If you look through the parameters in the generator inspector here, there are no parameters for changing its uh, aspect, ratio. aspect ratio. Thank you. Thank you. Um, exactly. So you could, what you could do is go to the video inspector and use the transform controls for scale. So if I open up scale and I drag on X, Oh. I can make it wider, but look what's happening. Oh, it's, it's all messing up the border and yeah. making it yucky. The border, <laughs> it's scaling. It's also scaling the border. So if you didn't have a border, you don't care. If you just want a, a white right. background to as a border for a photo or something. But this is a problem. Yeah. So I want to show you an easy fix because what's going on here is this shapes gen was built before the new version of Final... Sorry, before the new version of Motion. And Motion has changed the way shapes work. And now you can take advantage of that by making your own shape for Final Cut. So you're going to jump into Motion? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to jump into Motion. It doesn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're done. All right. So, All right. <laughs> we're done here. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to choose a Final Cut generator, but you could do this with a standard Motion project and publish it as a generator. So I'm going to open a new project. Um, I'm sorry, did, you didn't open the original one. The, no, I did not open a copy of the original one. It's, it, it's, you can't do it okay. with that. I just wanted to clarify. It's okay. a really good point. It's something I mentioned earlier. There might have been an easier way to do what I'm about to do by just modifying the existing one. But you Not can. so. Got to start from scratch. So I have a new motion project here. I'm going to hit R for the rectangle tool. Hold the shift key down so I get a perfect rectangle. Press escape. Press F1. Press the hooked arrow to center it. Go to the shape inspector right here. Add an outline. Change the color of the sure outline. sure it's red like the other one. I'll make it red, yeah. So now, here is the cool thing. If I write, if I control click on this guy and choose edit rectangle, uh, we don't have control points like you might be used to. We have these other little ways of controlling the shape. That's new in Motion 5.2? Yeah, yeah. And let me guess, you can publish that. Absolutely. Notice what's happening, uh, that nothing is changing in terms of the width of the outline. If I hold the option key down while I do this, both of them stretch and we aren't changing the width of the outline. So what's going on about with that, if we go to the inspector here uh, for this guy, if we go to the geometry tab, we can see that we've got a, a roundness slider that can make it rounder, which you can also control directly here by dragging. It's like the mask, it's like the mask shape tools in, uh, in Final Yeah, very similar, right? Uh, but there's also, there's a size that you've bought both width and height, and that's what I was doing in the canvas, but you can do it right here in the inspector. And then there is this control points, convert to points option. Ah. So before, all shapes were control points. And once they're control points, you manipulate them individually, but any scale changes affect the outline and the, and the, uh, the fill as well. Right. So as long as you don't convert to points, you have this sort of vector access to controlling the shape. So I'm basically done. I just created the shape. The question now is I just want to publish it and choose what to expose in Final yeah, Cut. Exactly. So certainly I want to expose, I'm just going to control click on each of these parameter names and choose publish. So I'll publish the roundness. I'll publish the size. I'm control click on there, control click on there, publish. And there might be a few other things I'd like to publish. For instance, if we go to the style, probably the fill color would be worthwhile, yeah, right? Fill and outline for sure. 
Yeah, and this is the fun part of deciding what do you want to expose to be available to the Final Cut editor. To fill an outline, and maybe you want the outline width to be published as well. Maybe you want the fill opacity to be published. Oh, he's going crazy. Okay. Well, and let's do one more thing. Let's go to the Properties Inspector, and let's publish the position, and let's publish the rotation. So you can manipulate this in any way you want, pretty much. If I go to the Project uh, you have to select the project layer, icon. Yes, yeah, select the project layer in the layers list here, and then we go to the project inspector. Here's our published parameters. And you can test everything right there. And I'm going to change the order a little bit. I, I published the fill opacity uh, in the wrong order, so I'll just drag that up. And this says brush color, but it's not outline brush color now. Let's just call it outline color. So you can see you can easily rename and reorder published parameters. Mm -hmm. So now that we've done that, I'll just press Command S to save and. Uh, I'll give it a new category. Well, before you do that, it um, seems that... You, yeah. You, did what? you... It looks like something got unselected. Uh, sorry. Oh, maybe I was wrong. I think it's okay. Okay. So I'm going to command us to save, and I'm going to give it a new category, which I'll call My Shapes. Because <laughs> you could do this, obviously, you create a circle shape as well or something else. Uh, and I don't care about a theme, and I'll call this... Um, I'll call this a rectangle, even though it's a square, because we can make it a rectangle. I don't need any unused media. There's no media here at all, and I don't need preview, so I'll click Publish. You never choose those options. No, I don't. Every I single don't. time, you can almost <laughs> count on you saying, don't, I never check I these. Don't. I'm glad they're unchecked by default. <laughs> so if I go back to Final Cut now, and in the, uh, I'll close and open the Generators Inspector, and there are my, my shapes. shapes. And there's my rectangle. I'll press E to append it. And because I've published this parameters, I'll open up scale, and now I can freely adjust X. Is that, is that mine own one I put in there? Oh, no, I don't want to do scale. You don't want to transform. I want to generate. That's oh, very yeah. careful. So I'm, I'm going, inspector. I don't see any difference between yeah. that and that. We were in the video, video inspector. We want to be in the generator inspector. I was just testing my... you. <laughs> Publish parameters. That's right. what we want here. So here we have the width and the height. So this is why we want to control here, there. See, now, now it looks right. Yeah, now it looks right. We're keeping that width of the outline the same no matter how wide the overall rectangle. And then, of course, we could drop the fill opacity down and all those things that you published. All the things that we published. Move, move the whole thing somewhere else. Uh, you published all kind of parameters. All kind of, all kind of, yeah. Because you you might need them depending on what you want to frame, right. yeah. uh, and then you put this below your video clip yeah. and go from there. So uh, maybe in a future episode we'll talk about an on-screen control for that. But I think that's enough for here, uh, as a way of taking advantage of the new functionality in Motion to basically update some of the content in front of content. I think that's excellent. I know, it, we just basically made a rectangle with an outline on it, but very useful to have these little yeah, backgrounds. Yeah, you, you need that kind of stuff, yeah. and you'd be frustrated trying to get the ones in there to work right. the way you want it to. Excellent. So if you want to really learn motion and take, take your knowledge to the next level, he's, we have a whole library. In fact, uh, we're seeing more and more people uh, learning motion from Mark just to learn how to do publishing and make plugins and stuff. There's a lot of interest in that right now. He's got a great tutorial called Rigging and Publishing you'll want to check out. Um, RippleTraining.com for these tutorials, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all of the usual places, and we have a great series of under fives every week on YouTube. And uh, we just want to, again, take the opportunity to thank you for uh, supporting us and watching us every week. Thanks for uh, watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.